Hey guys, today we are gonna be going back six years ago when I first started posting plant videos. I'm going to be watching the very first plant tour I ever posted. So much has changed since I posted this. Any plants that I still have, we'll do a little bit of a where are they now and I'll tell you where they are, where some of these plants ended up. <laughs> and yeah. Hey guys, it's Harley, and today I just thought I would do a houseplant tour. Oh, she's so cute. I gotta be honest, I spend way too many hours a week staring at myself with social media being my job, listening, looking at, and living as myself. Honestly, since then, I have a lot more like self-image issues, which I do think primarily has come from the fact that I've been doing this full time for almost six years now. I hadn't quit my job at this point, so I still was working full time at Dillard's department store at the Alex Nani counter. <laughs> since so social media became my job, I've become way more insecure honestly like straight up okay now let's get into the actual tour and we'll talk about the plants pause here and let me know any plant recommendations that you love in your own home so that i can have some ideas for plants to look out for when i go to the nursery and i go plant shopping i'd love to hear what you're loving it just makes it a lot easier to pick a few plants instead of 30 plants when i go out you know what i mean let's just get into it okay so first up we just have like this empty wall next to my west facing windows and those windows are huge have a of plants um two caladiums and then a <laughs> caladiums <laughs> When I filmed this, I had only been keeping plants in my own home for like maybe six months. I knew nothing about plants other than what I've learned from seeing like my mom and grandma take care of plants my whole life. Like they've always had had plants both indoor and outdoor. So I just kind of picked up some little things from them, but I didn't know anything. Caladium, for example. I loved caladium then. Now I don't because I can't take care of them. Uh, yeah, so a lot of these plants were bought like fairly recently to when I filmed this video Which is why they look very lush and plush and awesome and like I know what I'm doing even though I didn't I have this one sitting on um, Some pebbles with water and then this one just has some water down there. That's a good tip actually still works Still something I do to this day Sometimes a blossom or a bloom or a bud or whatever it is and I'm so excited for that to <laughs> I definitely overwatered this at one point. I do currently have one, but it did not, it's not this plant. It's one I propagated from some leaves I found. In the future, I'll probably move it. So moving <laughs> onward, this is my like bar where we sit down to eat, Hi. so right here. <laughs> Propagation has always been something I am very drawn to with plants. I think it's so cool that you can take a piece of plant tissue and like turn it into its own plant, like bring it to life into its own plant. I think that's so cool. And this was definitely in those days early on when I was like hoarding all the glass containers I could. I could use them for plants. I could take some cuttings and propagate my plants, you know? <laughs> it's just funny because this wine bottle is so big. And this pothos cutting is so small. Like even if that rooted, I don't know what happened to it, but even if it rooted, like what was my plan? What was I gonna do with that teeny tiny little pothos cutting? You know? <laughs> it's kind of cute, aww. Then here I have my peace lily. It does have a blossom. Let's see if I can turn this around to show you. Oh, I love it. Um, and then it has another blossom right there. This is a plant I just recently got rid of, like I would say maybe a year ago. So it did hang around for a really long time. That's pretty cool. It was like five years old, I guess, when I finally got rid of it. Then down here, I forget what this guy's called, but it's one of those ones where the flowers grow like upside down. Cyclamen. Um, burrows tiles. This one is an Echeveria of some sort. I can't remember what it is. Um, here I have some more donkey's tails and then a few others that are starting to get roots, but no plants yet. So we'll see what happens with those. 
Okay, the propagation thing. I love propagation, still do to this day. I definitely have to control myself to not constantly be chopping everything back and trying to like grow more plants. Even though all of these succulent leaf propagations died, it's not like this propagation process I was really into in the beginning was for nothing because I learned so much from trying to propagate these. And I do think that like little experiments even propagation experiments like this. Sometimes it's just trial and error, you know? Like you have to try it to learn anything. Otherwise you're just like sitting here stagnant. I don't know, like I just tried a lot of things in the beginning and I think that that's how I became maybe so knowledgeable. Well, I consider myself knowledgeable, I don't know. I don't know, I'm gonna shut up. Let's go back to the plants. Here I have my arrowhead plant. This has to be one of my favorite plants. It's just so, so easy. I love that it's kind of crazy and just grows wherever it pleases. Um, and as you can see, it's popping out a new leaf. This one I still have, it is up here. This plant has always meant a lot to me because it's like the one you see in the video is a cutting I got from my grandma. It was my very, very first plant at that time in 2018. My grandmother was still with us, but she has since passed. So where this plant has always meant a lot to me because it kind of sparked this like love of houseplants within me, it means even more to me now. And it's crazy that I've had it for six years. That is crazy. Time freaking flies, you know, like sometimes it drags, but it flies. Um, then this is a new purchase for me. This one is a Cita Mexicanum, I think is what it's called. Also a plant I really like, but for an outside, for like my deck or my patio or my porch. This one is very So cute though. And succulenty filling. So, but I'm really excited to repot him and get him growing in his forever spot. I just have to figure out where that is. Then in here I have these little like shelves with a bunch of plant crap down there. Dude, I don't know how anybody watched these videos cause I talked so freaking fast, <laughs> didn't take any breaths. I think I take more breaths these days. I'm probably chilling out in my old age. Um, I do also still like this China doll bush. It's a plant that I've killed multiple times cause I keep trying to keep it and I just, it just doesn't work for me, but I do still think that plant is really cute. Growing fairly well, just down here with partial, partial sun. Up here I have a lamb's ear succulent. Then I have my, Jade plant, I believe this one is. I love this one. It's dead, oh, dead. So much bigger since I moved it into here. Back there, I have some daisy, daisies growing in some dirt, but so far they haven't popped through yet. Then here I have a devil's tongue, maybe, but I really like it. Well. Syndapsis pictus exotica, and I kept that plant for a really long time. That plant ended up moving here with us, and. It got so big. I did a full video about how to grow a really big sedapsis like this. It's crazy because here it's so small, but like knowing what, I'll, I'll throw up a picture of it, but what it turned into is like crazy. It grew so much, so much. That is wild. Go me. <laughs> On this top row, I have one Echeveria. I hate Echeveria now. Croton. Also hate Croton. Polka dot kind. I love this. I have it in this pot my sister actually made back. In also, I can say my uh, soil game has come a long way. That is maybe where I've made the most drastic changes in my plant keeping. Very into like soil mixing, substrate mixing. It's just crazy to see that I was definitely just using those like peat based uh, pre-bagged mixes, which are fine, but I've just definitely leveled up in that department. And I think that has made a big difference in my ability to keep things alive. I do in college. Then here I have a Christmas cactus. Um, and this one is an Easter cactus, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. Here I have another large succulent. Then here I have a coffee plant, which I recently got on clearance at Lowe's for $1. And I've brought him back. He's actually gotten so, so much bigger since I got him. Oh, you know what makes me cringe? That I call, I referred to plants as he and she. Why? Why? There's nothing like wrong with that, but now when I hear people do that, it irks me. I don't know why. Oh my gosh, with my old age, I've become a hater. Uh. Monstera leaf propagating in water. I have a couple of ponytail palms in this 
little hanging section. Those ponytail palms died from killing that plant. I learned how not to kill that plant. So my plant now has grown so much and it's doing really well. So yeah, like, like how we were talking earlier, even though a lot of these plants have died, it's sad, but it wasn't necessarily for nothing because now my abilities to care for plants is a lot better, a lot deeper. I, we understand each other a little more, you know? So I do, try not to dwell on like the negative of a lot of these plants dying even though i do feel guilty and bad and like wish i had been able to keep these all alive because they would be massive now <sighs> here i have another poth pothos this guy's just growing like crazy there are new leaves everywhere and i'm really excited for him to vine i need to get him inside of some sunlight because the the variegation is kind of going away. I do still have this pothos. It lives in my kitchen and it's not very like massive or super impressive or anything because I've kept it root bound so that I wouldn't have to keep potting it up and potting it up. And also I've chopped it back so many times uh, just so that it still fits wherever I kind of want it to live in my house. I've also propagated it a few a few times. I have, I have its babies kind of all over the place wherever I feel like I need a filler plant. So yeah, I do still have this one here i have two different colors of polka dot plant both in pink but i love these i love polka dot plants i don't have these anymore but i do love them guys here i have some of my bridal valve vine propagating in water these guys honestly propagate so fast. I've had them in here for, I'm not even exaggerating, like 48 hours. I loved Bridal Veil Vine for a really long time, but I ended up deciding not to keep it because the leaves were really small and they would dry up super easily. If I like missed watering by even a day or two, the leaves would just like all dry up and drop and it was so messy. I decided I didn't want to deal with that anymore. So got rid of it. I have another polka dot plant, but the red variety. I think this one may be my favorite. But right now I just have them in his regular pot sitting on top of this one to help catch the water that drains out. I still do that. <laughs> Some things will never change. <laughs> then here, what is this one called? Um, it's called something Enjoy, I think. I think it's really freaking cute. And it's growing. I killed that plant so many times and I then Stop here, trying. Same with zebra plant. Zebra plant. I think Although I, I do think they're so pretty. Know. And I didn't realize how delicate these leaves were. And striking. Um, but yeah, so he's doing... Still to this day, don't, don't know how, how to take care of those, <laughs> honestly. Here I have a Fetonia, I think is what it's called. Oh, I love Fetonia. I should get a Fetonia. No, not yet. I'll get more plants at some point, but I'm not quite there yet. Okay, so there's all of that. Moving on to my kitchen counter, I have my spring cactus, Easter cactus here. Killed. About to bloom, and I'm so excited. These blooms are so pretty when they come in. Here I have some more assorted succulents with some more little propagating guys. Killed. Um, this one's a burrow's tail that is starting to get roots. I wonder if you can see. Oh, look, a little plant is about to pop through now. And then here is another Echeveria that is doing very well. That's actually a really cute succulent arrangement, I gotta say. Here onto the floor, I have, oh, what is this one called? It's in the Calathea family, I believe. That's a lie, I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. Oh my gosh, a Tenanth. Tenanthi? Liberciana or something like that. I, still to this day, I love this plant. I should look into getting one of those, honestly. I think I have some spots where it would do really well, like under my Soltec lights next to my Dracaena. I think it would do really well there. And I also will probably, oh my gosh, do I want one of these again? <gasps> I think this video is inspiring something within me. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna get a Tenanthi. Or a Tenanth? How do you say it? I don't know. But I do think that plant's so pretty and that is a plant I've always been super, super drawn to. So this is my sign, I think. I don't know. I just, I, I was really stressed out about my plants for a while. So I kind of have a fear of buying new plants until I'm absolutely certain that I have what I already have in my home under control. Cause it's so easy for things to get out of control for me. Maybe not for you, but for me, we'll see. Then next to it, I have a rubber plant. Again, I need to clean the leaves on this one, but it's getting some new leaves. And I'm really excited. These grow really well for me at my house. I do still have this rubber plant. It is up on my back deck and I will 
show you a video of this, but please, if you're mid-sentence typing a hate comment because of how terrible my plant looks, I forgot to bring it inside one day and it got really, really burned. In one day, okay? I'm sorry about it. That's probably why this plant isn't massive at this point, even though it's been six years since this video. It hasn't grown all that much, probably because I've been not great with it. But I do think it's one I've made some recent progress on. So I'll pull off a whole bunch of these dried up leaves and we'll start again next year. Hope for better next year. It's all I can do. Try to improve. Then here was one of my first plants I ever got. It is another rubber tree. This one's like the, I think it's called strawberries and cream. Um, this one has kind of, it started out being a fast grower, but this one has kind of slowed down. But I really, really, really love this one. I freaking love those. If I saw one of those now, I would buy it. This plant was definitely not getting enough light in this house. Even though this this house was very well natural, naturally lit, it still was not anywhere near enough. So now I do think I have good enough light because I have grow lights. Now just moving over here onto my bookcase. You can see it's a really messy bookcase. But up top, I have a parlor palm, which is really easy. I love this plant, it's so cute. Um, then I have another like lamb's ear type thing. I'm not exactly sure. I have some assorted succulents. I got this guy and most of these guys from Succulent Studios, which is a subscription service. And I do have a $5 off coupon that I'll link down below. I did really like the subscription service thing. It was so fun. And None here, of these are around. Away box light thing i have some more succulents this one is an ox tongue i think this one's uh, an echeveria chroma this one is a haworthia quartata i have no idea what this one is no idea what this one is i love the lobster claw i miss it i think about so it all the time tight. but i did i did um, rot it yeah and then a few others i think this is like an oh, echeveria I also really sunrise that or something one, like that sunrise. but i love them then just above that, I have another shelf with some more plants. Ugh. So this one is a Hoya. Carry I, I have this. That is crazy. I forgot I still have this. I guess every once in a while I pay attention to it, but it actually lives in my grow tent and I don't, it's like at the bottom of my totem pole. I just don't like the way that these grow in. And I don't know if it's a me issue. Like I just maybe don't really like the plant. So I don't take care of it as much as some of the other plants I like more, you know, but I do still have this plant. We've gone through our issues, our struggles, our chop backs to help take care of those issues. And I mean, now it's like gotten a little bit long, but it took a really, really long time. So I'm really surprised that I've had that plant for so long. That makes me like it a little bit more. And maybe I'm gonna like, honestly, it comes down to respect. Maybe I'm gonna respect it more. I need to respect all of my plants more. It's just, I had, I got so many for a while there. It was hard. And here I have, I think this is an elephant bush or Gosh, what is this? Gone. Portulacaria something. Afra. Cute. Gone. <laughs> I just grew out of love with that one and got rid of it. So easy and hassle-free. That's cute. I love that. I'm gonna look. What was that called? Oh, I'm gonna look for one of those. That's cute. The little like curly leaves. Counter is dirty. I've been repotting and stuff, so ignore all that dirt. This guy is my dumb cane. He's so easy to take care of. <laughs> that was a lie. <laughs> a blatant lie. Bitch, why are you lying? <laughs> then here I have another peperomia. This one is a peperonia prep peperomia ripple, I believe. <laughs> oh cute. I do still really like that plant. If I ever got a pepperoni again, it would probably be that one. Um, and then here I have a spearmint plant. This oh, guy cute. is doing it. extremely well as well. And I really like having him here next to my counter because I can just pull off some of the leaves and stick them in water or tea. tea and it's a really easy way to add a little bit of flavor. I ended up potting that one outside in the backyard. I know all you outdoor gardeners are like cringing right now. It probably has taken over the people's backyard that bought this house from us. Uh, it's probably everywhere now, but honestly, it, the yard needed it, okay? It could use a little a little spearmint filled. So it's probably looks pretty good back there now, unless the people tore it out. 
I don't know, but that did end up outside at that house. Should I go sneak into their backyard to check? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, so here behind my couch, I have this crow in. This guy is kind of struggling. I got him in clearance at Lowe's. I don't know what was happening to oh. him. And that exhibit A, why I don't buy crow ins anymore. <laughs> why did I buy that at clearance at Lowe's? What did I think I was gonna be able to do with my six months of experience? <laughs> it definitely died. Yeah, I think he's so. Then immediately in front of my southern facing window, I have another um, plant that I've saved from Lowe's. This one is an anthurium. He had four or five leaves and they all dropped off. But, um, so. I tried with that plant for so long. It ended up moving here with me, I think. And I killed it. I tried. I tried. I don't know. We'll see if he can be saved or not. This was only like a dollar. But fingers crossed because I think the leaves on these are so, so cute. Then up here, Bridalville. So this is a step stool, but I needed these guys to be in front of the window and I haven't got a shelving unit for this wall. Wow. Opposite the window dress. I didn't have any of my shelves at this point. I did end up buying a lot of shelves and surfaces and tables. Well, mostly like thrifting them and then a few I got at Ikea to house more plants. So I cannot believe that this was before <laughs> the shelf days. Wow, that's crazy. I need to watch a few more of my uh, tours back so I can like have a better timeline in my head. It's all a blur, honestly. But once I get that perfect table and I'll move them there. But for now, this is just kind of clogging up the space in my house, but it works. So here I have another um, bridal bell vine that I've been propagating. Oh, those are propagations. That actually looks pretty good for a propagation. And stuck them in some dirt and these guys are super fast rooters. So yeah, and I really, really like this. Beautiful. So right next to him, I have another crow in. Why? <laughs> Why did I have so many croatins, you guys? I need to know how many of you, <laughs> if you have a croton in your house, why? No, I'm just kidding. How? How? What's your like method? Because those suckers. Yeah, we're not friends. We never got along. Never. They looked good for like one week after I brought them home and then. I really love this guy as well. When I purchased him, he had a lot more leaves. As you can see, a lot of them have fallen off. And it continued but to happen. But that's because I moved him from the nursery to my house and he's gone into shock. It's a little but more than shock. Still look relatively nah, that is a plant that if you move it, it like drops all its leaves, but I could never get them to grow back once the leaves were dropped. Fine. Then up here on this ledge, I have a pothos in just a little plastic pot. And moving on this way, I have a philodendron Brazil, I believe is what this one is called. But the leaves have just taken off and I think it looks so cute in this pot. That is my philodendron Brazil that I still have. I've propagated it many, many times, but wow, that's so cool. I've had that plant for a really long time. It's crazy if I had like done the moss pole thing, these would be freaking massive. I bet these leaves would be freaking huge. But I'm just not a moss pole gal. I just like it low maintenance and easy, breezy, beautiful cover girl. Philodendra Brazil is easy, breezy, beautiful cover girl if you just want it to hang. I do also still have this pot and I thrifted it. I remember being so excited when I found it because I thought it was perfect for that Philodendra in Brazil. Now I think my Monster Thai Constellation lives in it. I'll have to double check on that though. I'm really excited for when these vine down. It's gonna be so cute. And they did. I had a lot of vining plants up there at one point. It was really pretty. And here I have an ivy that lost a big section of its leaves. So I don't know, we'll see what happens with this. And I walked into the bathroom without showing you these two babies. So here I have my Monstera plant. Such an easy grower. It's gotten so big since I picked him up a few weeks ago. Um, but just look how cute he looks in his little pot. I'm so excited for some of the leaves on this guy to split. That actually lives with my sister Ellie and I do have a picture of it from like pretty recently in the last month or so. So that plant is still alive, doesn't live with me anymore. So cute, I love him. And then here I have my fiddle leaf fig. I got him about a week and a half ago. I recently repotted him into this pot to give him some more space. But these two large leaves here have popped out and gotten huge in the couple weeks I've had him. And it looks like there's a new one kind of starting to form down there. So I am really excited. He's doing so, so well. Fiddle leaf, dead. It did grow a lot. I ended up bringing it here. It grew a lot. It always just kind of had like a tuft of leaves at the top. 
And then I finally gave up on it. Cause it was just like, it would drop leaves. I would stress, they would grow back. It would drop them again. And then I would stress again. And it was just like a never ending vicious, vicious cycle. So I just decided we're not like, we're just not a match. We're not a match. It's okay. It's fine. It's fine. Here I am in my bathroom. There are no windows in here. So I just have the one um, snake plant and it seems to be doing well. Cute right and here. And now we are in my nail room. Here I have this huge tapestry so you can't really see this plant. I just got this one yesterday. It is an yesterday. angel vine. It's so, <laughs> that is so pretty cute, cute though. So I, really I think that would be a good deck plant. Not an inside plant. It needs way too much light, I feel like. I wish you could see it a lot better. I don't know, maybe it's, it's just me though. Doesn't really help. Yeah, I don't like it inside. Ooh, I love her. Why is that one a her? Okay. My shelf oh. with all my nail polish and things like that. I think of this philodendron xanadu all the time and I like kick myself for getting rid of it because I love the look of this plant. Still to this day, I love this plant. I think back to it often, I reminisce often, but like I probably won't buy one again because I'm sure there was a reason I ended up getting rid of it. But for a long time, I like absolutely loved this thing. I think it's a pothos. We're just gonna say pothos. Um, but yeah, I just recently repotted him into this plant. I think that the colors on the pot look really cute with the uh, like accents on the leaves. It's just so cute and bushy and full. Xanadu, I think it was. Am I confusing myself now? Is it a Xanadu? I feel like it was a Xanadu. I love really full green plants like this. And then next to it, I have another hanging plant. This is my tricolor Hoya. <gasps> oh, I recently, like last six months even, got rid of that one. I'm kind of kicking myself. I wish I would have kept it. I'm gonna go check in my grow tent. I'm pretty sure I got rid of it. Bummer, why did I do that? Because I've had that plant for so long. It was really big when I got rid of it. Wow, that's crazy. I don't know, we will see. We're immediately in front of a north facing window, but here is my bridal bell vine. Um, as you can see, I just cut off a bunch of the ends and that's what I've been propagating. Oh, wow, my bridal bell. Me and my friend Andalee, who if you've been here since these days, like you probably remember her, but we both got those really long bridal veil vine plants and I'm pretty sure she doesn't have hers anymore either, although her plant setup is beautiful. Yeah, we both got those really long, long ones. We thought they were so cool. And I still do, just not in my house because they got way too messy. And especially with kids who, when they were little, liked to put stuff in their mouth, like it just didn't really mix, you know? So when my Kit when my first son started crawling around and being more mobile and being interested in little snackies like that, I got rid of it. And I did just throw this one away, honestly, but it wasn't as lush at that point as it was here. It had definitely like died back a bit. And I almost, I almost forgot these guys as well, but we're back in my living room. So here, this is just a little mug my sister made in ceramics class and it has this little succulent in it. I'm not quite sure. <sighs> Why did I, why was I keeping that? Throw it away, I probably did like a year later. Um, and then here I have another succulent I got for my sister-in-law for Christmas. And I'm not sure what this is. I'm not sure if it's doing well or not doing well. I literally just like let this one sit here and it kind of does its thing. So. Does its thing and dies slowly. That was one of those glued down pots. And at that time I hadn't really done research on how to remove them from that. So that was just like the last sole survivor that somehow managed to survive in that glued down substrate, that glued down potting mix. Um, those are all dead now. Um, so here on my coffee table, I just have this aloe plant. I like plants like this because when it is thirsty, the leaves kind of curl. Oh, that's cute. Soon after I water him, um, all the leaves go straight. So you can just kind of tell Still when he's needing some fresh, some new water. He just lets you know. I think it's really cool. Something just fell off. That's weird. Then down here, there's a puppy. Oh, And I have this bark. little faux fur rug in front of my tapestry next to my TV stand um, that has a few plants on it. What was I doing? I still definitely have like the same style, like very eclectic and colorful. My, I guess my home fashion sense has come a long way. Although I see, I can still definitely see myself in all of this. Like I definitely loved the patterns and textures and colors, still do. You probably can't tell down here. This is more of a basic room that I haven't really like try it like you know in my living room though it's definitely very evident that we are the same person you know what i'm saying so here i have my calathea this is one of my all-time favorite plants i love how it moves 
Um, as you can see, the bottom of it is purple, so at night all of these fold up. Um, that's why it's called like the prayer plan or something, but all of them fold up so you can just see the purple. But it's really, really cool. This is the first plant I ever picked up from a nursery. I kept it a really long time. It also ended up moving into this house, but I ended up throwing it away. Um, I can't even remember when, but I do remember throwing it away. When I first started looking into plants, the two plants I was like super interested in were Marimo moss balls and these uh, rattlesnake calatheas. The rattlesnake calatheas, I was like so enamored about how the leaves fold up at night. So I, one night, I was like up all night long looking up how the marimo moss balls are around or like how they live out in the wild and then also how the leaves would fold up and i went so tired to work the next day i specifically remember laying on my couch all night googling all sorts of plant things like that it was really fun oh i kind of missed that i just like didn't even know what i was in for you know with this plant thing that's so cute oh they made me feel so excited And here I have a Norfolk pine. This one's an extremely slow grower for me, but it seems to be doing well. That one killed, but I now have another one that I've had for a while now, a few years now, that's pretty big. And I do attribute my success this time to my failed attempt that time. Then next to that, I have a rubber plant, which look, it's getting a whole bunch of new leaves. This one has grown so, so quickly. That leaf is going to pop out any second now. I would never ever buy this plant again. It was so delicate and like would melt back. The leaves would turn brown and like melt back. It was weird. So then down here, I have a, <gasps> oh, should I get a goldfish plant? Because I've been wanting to hang a plant down here. I might get a goldfish plant next. It had some blooms on it. Oh, there's one of them that fell off and shriveled up, but this one gets little, um, flowers on it that look like goldfish without fins and this one's easy so so easy to take care of he's kind of reaching for the light so i'm gonna probably move him closer to some direct light i love the goldfish flowers then over here i have my zz plant which i got from my sister for christmas and this is another really really easy plant my sister ellie gave this to me for christmas and my it now lives with my sister morgan i think just like maybe two years ago i gave it to my sister morgan so she does still have it that's pretty cool and now we are facing another um west window i have like this whole big thing of windows here um, but I have my shamrock plant, which is just honestly thriving. And look at how cute the pot is that it's in. Oh, I love this plant. I just am really bad at the plants that go into dormancy. So I would probably never get a plant like this again. But I do think oxalis are so beautiful. I just hate the dormancy period. Oh, it's so pretty. I do still like these swirly plants, but I don't think you're actually supposed to, I don't think that they're meant to grow in regular soil. I, maybe I'm making that up. I think it's like a bog plant that's meant to be in like a bog. I don't know. I do also still have this table, but I've spray painted it black now. That's kind of cool. I hang on to shit for a long time. Maybe I should get rid of it. Those were all of my plants. Um, but, oh, look at how cute my plants all look in the background. I'm a proud mother. I love them. So that was my house plant tour for spring 2018. I've been to my local nursery like four times in the last month. So I'm sure come summertime, I'll have a lot more plants to show you. So maybe I'll make this like a seasonal thing. But before you click off the video, I would love for you to comment down below and tell me what your favorite house plant is and what you could recommend me picking up. I love to have, um, I love to have plant recommendations. That was my house plant tour for spring 2018. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Bye. That's crazy. I totally thought that I, before I watched this, I totally thought that this was like at the point I had, you know, my canopy bed for those of you that remember. And I like hung plants all along the outside. I guess I didn't have any plants in my bedroom at this point. That is so crazy to me because the bedroom plants were like a staple for a long time. Plot twist, I'm actually reverted to this point because I don't have plants in my bedroom again. I could do, I could like, I could definitely, I could 
maybe do a video and talk about that and like why I don't keep plants in my bedroom anymore even though I really enjoyed it for a long time. I feel like I have some valid reasons. Well, they're valid for me, so that's all that matters, but I could share maybe a little insight on how my life has improved since not having plants in the bedroom. Is my plant tour, wait, did I used to sing my, did I sing my outros? Spring 2018, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Bye. When did I start singing bye? I just said bye. Now I say bye. Bye. Oh, that was kind of fun. Okay, maybe I want to go watch some of my old videos again and like get back to my roots. Like in a way, I've gotten out of touch with my younger self. I don't know what, like I think maybe since becoming a mom, a lot has changed in here, both in a good way and also in a bad way. Uh, so maybe I need to like try to re find her. You know, that young little whippersnapper. How old would I have? At that time, I would have been 24 years old in 2018. Oh, wow. So like in one year, I would have gotten pregnant with Kai. And then once Kai was born, I just feel like I've totally become a different person. And I think that's where a lot of my issues came from with keeping so many plants. Like at that time I was able to take care of so many plants. I, I didn't really have that many in this video, but in that next year, I definitely accumulated quite the collection. And I don't know, it just became unsustainable for me as a mom, but it's kind of nice to watch back on my younger pre-motherhood self. And I don't know, I get, it, it's just a good reminder, you know? It's good to look back, it's good to reminisce, I guess. I just remember really liking myself. Okay, maybe this is getting way too deep, but I do remember really liking myself at that time and feeling super capable, and that's just not something I've entirely felt. <laughs> my mother, This since I've become a mother, I guess, is like where the line is for me, where I can like be like, okay, this is when I felt good, this is when I like kind of started to doubt myself a little bit. Um, I don't know. That was just good for me, I feel like. I would love to hear your thoughts on that and like how crazy is it? I've been doing this full time, I guess, for five years now. A little over five years now. So much changed and that girl had no idea what was about to come. That is just so wild. So that was really fun for me and I hope it was fun for you. I hope you got something out of it. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I will see you next time. Bye! <laughs>